Hello and welcome to Model Kit Stuff and today we have a first impressions of a ship but this one is plastic but wood. So I haven't done a first impressions of a tall ship before I don't think um, and that's because there hasn't really been any new tall ship kits out for a very very long time maybe 30, 40 years possibly since anyone released a decent new good scale kit. And I have to be honest, if you go and buy one of these vintage classics, uh, you're getting something that usually has a lot of flash, a lot of distortion, and it's a lot of work. And it puts me off, I have to be honest. But there's something about this kit that draws me in. More about that in a minute. So this is an Airfix Vintage Classic and that means it's a model they produced quite some time ago and as you can see it's too big for my uh, camera to get it into shot on my desk so we're going to have a look at the box element at least um, from my kitchen floor. So uh, the box has the original artwork on from its release and its original release was in 1977. So the one you're looking at here was released I think 2020 thereabouts um, and it's basically um, a complete re-release of the kit as it was originally in, in 1977. Now this is the fourth time they've uh, released it. Um, they released it second time in 1997 um, and that had changed parts in it according to scale mates. Now I suspect that the changed part was probably the rigging tool that we'll find in here. So there's a little black rigging tool that replaced um, sort of uh, pre-cut rigging that you just had to glue into place. Um, so I suspect that would have been the change in parts, nothing else would have changed. So this is pretty much as it was originally in 1997. Uh, sorry, this is originally as it was in 1977. So um, the, the artwork is very colourful, Tudor ships were very colourful and that's in that sort of uh, style. Um, it's Elizabethan actually. Um, and as we go around the box, we can see the kit number there of A09258V and below it the scale 172. And that is the bit that interests me. Most of their other tall ships are um, scales quite different than that. So uh, to be able to get the ship, the model, to uh, a decent size for displaying and and easy to get in a box and so on. So they're all slightly different scales. Um, so the reason why this is 172 scale is it's actually quite a small ship. And if you go and see the replica uh, uh, docked in London, it's absolutely tiny. And when you see it, you think, wow, they spent all that time on this tiny little ship. <laughs> Um, but yeah, it's a small ship, so they were able to do it in a bigger scale. And of course, 172 scale um, lends itself to all sorts of opportunities, not least that it's a common scale used in wooden model ship kits, which means we've got lots of ship fittings available that might be able to replace some of the plastic in this and give us some really nice features on this plastic ship in the way of um, aftermarket upgrades, if you like. So as this is not in a red box, um, it's worth just going around to see what the uh, box looks like. Um, we do have a typical um, airfix approach to the box side with 
um, some information there in various different languages um, telling us that it's uh, an 8 plus um, and um, a little bit of history there as well uh, which um, I have not read it but no doubt we'll say that it was Sir Francis Drake's um, ship that circumnavigated the world and he robbed a lot of Spanish gold. Uh, we've got the box art repeated on both the ends and then as we come around this side we see that it's a skill four comes with four flying hours uh, we have relatively small list of paints for how colorful it is um, and we might well challenge that i would suspect um, but there is the paints that they're going to call out in the instructions um, and a bit more history and right there it's telling us that we've got 109 parts. So the first thing out of the box is the VAT form sales. Now obviously they don't look massively realistic and there are things that you can do to improve that but you're not going to change some of the defects in the moulding and bits and pieces like that. What I would say is when you buy the vintage classic you get a nice clean white one. Often in older kits, these will have aged and gone a bit yellow, but actually that looks a little bit more like a, like an, a sail colour, to be honest. Um, the other thing is you're not going to get the damage, so um, the little dimples and things that get caused by it being um, chucked around in um, uh, the box for ages means that often you get damage to these, they get, they get ripped because they are quite fairly thin. Um, so yeah. Um, nice set of sails if you want to use them they're easy to use you punch a hole through and tie things on but you can also use them as a template for cloth sails if you wish or of course you can just leave them off and that way you get to see the spars and masts a bit more clearly so that is our sails let's dig out the instructions and take ourselves back to 1977 so what we get is the same as you get with the whole range of vintage classics from Airfix. You get a partially represented um, instruction manual. So on the front cover, it's the typical A4 stapled full color um, instruction manual. Um, and, and we have the usual little bit of history in, in different um, languages. Um, and then it tells us to um, uh, clean and wash um, in soapy water and that some parts of the kit may not be um, required for the build so that's their usual standard statement. As we go over to the second page we have uh, assembly instructions some basic get yourself started information again in multiple languages and then uh, assembly icon instructions and some of these are uh, quite familiar uh, some of these we might not have seen for a while uh, I guess and it looks like they might have updated them slightly but yeah um, it basically tells you what the key is for any symbols in the instructions and when we get to step one we are back to the original 1977 drawings now i don't know if because i've not built this before so i don't know if they rework the instructions um, at all um, break them down a bit more using the same drawings i really don't know but quite clearly these are the original drawings there and in this first step we can see that the two hull halves are coming together with the main decking um, there is nothing below that main deck so we're going to have dunny going to have dummy cannons and then you get that classic um, tall ship base that actually the Ravel one was very similar as well as I seem to recall. Um, so yeah, um, that's a, a nice easy first step and then in the next step we're putting um, uh, more deck in at the, at the bow and some bulkheads um, along the, the deck. All of these will be quite colourful so the fact that they're separate is nice, gives you a real opportunity to paint them up, clean them up, test fit them 
and really make them pop out before you stick them into place. We have some form of hood over that uh, grating space there. Looks like we have quite a lot of, um, rather than gratings, hatches already pre-molded into the deck there. Um, and then we have the openings for the anchor ropes going into the um, bow there. So um, if that's solid, we'll probably want to open that up and round the edges off and, and all that sort of stuff. And of course, the transom's going in there as well. Again, that will be quite colourful. Whether it pays off to paint that or part paint it, we'll have to see when we look at the parts. Okay. Okay, step three, and we are putting together the rudder, a two-piece rudder, um, and then that is being installed in step four along with the uh, gallery, um, which is an external gallery, which was quite common. So we'll have a door there, a couple of windows, and you can step out onto that gallery, which is nice. Uh, then the gallery sides are going on. Um, again, all of these will be nice bright colours. Um, there is no paint shout outs through this. It'll all be done at the end. Um, and then we have four cannons and four anchors. They look very much like um, blown up drawings from the original. I reckon they were smaller and they've just blown them up and, and put them in. That's I, That's just the way they look to me. Uh, but we've got truck, uh, the carriage with the trucks already on, and then we've got separate cannons. So we'll have to have a look at the quality of those because they would be easy to swap out, as would the cannon, I suspect. So let's have a look. We're at eight steps already. Step nine, and we're installing the cannons. We've got some bits going in. Um, We've got dummy cannons and um, uh, the, the covers for them. Uh, and then we've got the um, chain plates going in. Um, we're going to have blocks with, with rope already moulded in. So that's a prime contender for replacing um, at 172 scale. Get some wooden blocks and thread them yourself, and that'll look so much better. Um, cat head going on, um, and we do have an option for open and close, which is uh, interesting. You, you might want to take that option given that it's dummy cannons, but we might well be able to find some 172 dummy cannons to go in there, as it's quite a common process to use that in wooden ships as well. Step 10 is pretty much a repeat of step 9, and I suspect that is a, possibly a reworking. I wouldn't have expected more than two to four steps on, on this in 1977, so I suspect they've broken this down a little bit. Step 11 deals with the cannon on the transom, and then we are into masts. So we've got four main and mizzen masts. Uh, one, two, three, yep, all correctly stepped and, and the correct shape. Um, the yards seem to be attached by a single pin. So that is something that you could either modify and tie them on, which would look more authentic. Or if we wanted to replace these with wooden masts, we might well use parable beans and, and so on. Um, we have to look at the quality of the plastic to make a decision on what we want to do. Um, then there's a detail view there showing how the uh, join, how the two masts join together. Now what we should be doing there is wrapping um, rope around there and binding it the same there. Um, and those holes in your crow's nest there is where you're going to be able to put your rigging through from your from your rat lines and, and tie that around there as well. Um, so, so there's quite a bit of stuff that we can actually um, do to add to this, even if we're keeping all of this plastic. 
Um, and again, blocks and pulleys would make all the difference here. Step 13, installation of the masts. We've got the bowsprit going on um, and we've got a nameplate for the base um, and we've got some figures. I've not seen figures on a tall ship before and I've built, what, three, four, five, six tall ships in my time. I've never seen figures. But again, that's because this is 172 scale, so that's really interesting. Figure positions optional. So, yeah, um, and it looks like we've got five figures there. So two of them carrying barrels. Looks like two of them are the same. Then those two uh, scrubbing the deck, maybe. So that's another two the same. Um and that one looks different. That does that look like a marine? Maybe. So I think we've got three different figures across the five figures included. Step fourteen is our rat lines, um, and we have the instructions here for using the uh, rigging machine. So we'll have a look at that. Uh, when we get to it. So you've got um, V, W, X, Z and Y and then it'll tell you here where they are. So um, yeah, you need it tells you how much length, uh, positions on the tool and then it all comes together. Um, you'd have to study it. It's been a long time since I've done it so you'd have to study it but it is a brilliant little tool. Um, and you can see there the rat lines going in, although they don't show you how to tie them off. Because um, really what should happen is that rat line should go up, loop round and come back down again. They're not individual lines. Then as we turn over page 15, we have um, standard rigging. Um, so all of that would be um, black. So that would be tarred rope standard rigging um, whereas this here if we if we replace it would be um, sort of natural colored untarred rope because that's for adjusting um, so we have standard and we have running rigging and all of this pretty much is standard rigging those on the ends of the yards might be might be running rigging we'd have to make a decision um, we've got Rigging there for the anchors as well, which says stowed detail. Um, but we can also do other things like um, puddening the, an the anchor, which is adding rope to the ring and that sort of thing. Um, all doable at 172 scale. Then step 16, which is our final step is the addition of flags and the uh, vac form sails. Um, and we can see there's one or two additional ropes being added with the sails. Um, it's not really explicitly telling you that you need to tie them on. I mean, it would need rings of rope the full length of the yard arms, really, um, to make it look right. But if you know how it should look, um, it's not difficult to do. It really isn't. On our next page, we have a full explanation of how to use whatever it's uh, referred to as their rigging machine. Um, I think machine's a little strong of a word, but it is uh, actually a very good tool. Um, and it allows you to uh, get the rat lines in the right place um, and put all those little foot rungs in and um, it does a nice job of it. Um, it will tell you to coat it in liquid glue. Um, obviously, that needs to be watered down PVA rather than um, uh, plastic cement. And then on the last page, we've got what is clearly the original um, paint instructions. It would be really nice for them to um, redo this in the way that they do their paint instructions now. I think it would really, really help. Um, what you get is different patterns denote different colours, so you have to try and work out a little bit. There's one paint shout out I can see here, which is the uh, cannons in 33, 
rather than doing them matte white, which is how they appear in the picture. So that's clearly a, a correction. Uh, so for example here, I'm going to guess that is that one, forest green. Um, and then you've got that there, which is golden brown, so natural wood, I guess. Cannons again, all point, picked out in black. So yeah, not difficult. Um, what have we got? Signal red, forest green, ocean blue, matte white, flesh, and matte black. I'm not sure if those color colors all still exist. Um, we would have to have a look. Also included in the kit are three flags. They they look like they're self-adhesive to me, but I might be wrong. I'm just going to explore that. Yep, they are self-adhesive um, flags. They're a bit glossy for me, um, but when we've done them, if you mat them down, they might work okay. And actually, if you put them, stick them onto some foil, although they might be a little bit thick, you might be able to um, get a nice um, fluttery feel to them from that. But yeah, three flags. So all the plastic parts come in one massive bag. Um, and usually it all collects at the bottom because they all break off the sprue, but that's not the uh, doesn't appear to be the case at least. So I'm going to open the bag at the top and keep it as large as we can. Right, let's get this slot out and work through it. So I can tell you we did have some loose parts in there, but we will uh, talk about that um, at the end. So. Let's deal with the hull first. We've got two hull halves, and I've got to say, actually, they're not bad at all in, in terms of condition. Um, there's no heavy flash on these, which really surprises me. Uh, there is a little bit of flash, but it's by no means um, full of it. Not too bad to clean up. Uh, the next big sin of a kit of this sort of age is sink and we do have a little bit we have a little bit there but it's hardly noticeable um, I think we've got away with it um, so these will form the inside of the railings as well and there is some distortion on that but I think my gut feel is cut them out and replace them with actual wood um, because the thicknesses are all a bit odd and you can just see there's a kink there where it sort of kicks out. It's not, it's not great, and you're not going to correct that particularly easily. Um, the rest of it's okay, other than it, it, it's two-dimensional in the back. So I think replacing it just helps us to improve that. Uh, the, the issue, of course, is the plastic is quite thin, so it doesn't, doesn't quite lend itself to being replaced by wood, but we can do it and we will. Um, yeah, otherwise not too bad. All the paint positions are marked off on the edges. Don't know if you can see that on the camera there, but it, uh, all the little triangles and things are marked out. And actually, as it goes, it's not too bad. It's even got steelers marked out in the in the stern area there. And we do have a stern post and a false keel. Yeah, that's all okay. Um, now this is the female half. We can see some location holes there. Um, and we've got one ejector pin there that's probably visible. I don't know whether that one is or not. I think so. I think we've got a bulkhead going there, down to a deck there. So I think that will be visible. But it's raised, so easy to deal with. Um, we do have some damage there, though, um, which will be this part that was floating around in the bottom of the bag. 
and well I'm not going to say it but uh, we all know why that is so there we go so we've got it we can make the repair or as I think we might we could just replace it we've got another bit of plastic there that looks like it's broken off something now that one's got a big sprue connector on this one doesn't but it's not been removed in um, a particularly um, good way so we've got quite a bit of damage here to the false keel so we'll have to fill that there's also a bit of a chunk missing out of it which has actually come out of it out of the mold like that so that's interesting now this side is straighter we've not got a kink um, but yeah that's all good. I wonder if we can get these two. Probably not. We've got definitely got to clean up here. There's some odd ridges there. But uh, let's see if we can get an idea of how well this might fit. Not too bad. With the bow sprit just under half a metre long, so a, a decent size. Decent scale to work with means we can add some details, ropes, buckets, bits and pieces, and it, it'll look not half bad. Yeah, that's all right. So our next part is the main deck. Um, and it's a little bit scruffy around the edges, but... Um, quick go over with a sanding stick that should be fine uh, and what we've got is we've got some nice planks marked out but there's no butt joints um, so that's something we could choose to put in a butt joint and a shift pattern and that would actually look all right um, yeah it's quite nicely molded actually um, it does have a margin plank uh, which goes all the way around so again that's quite nice and they've done it on all of the decks margin plank and even a bit of joggling so that's good as well um, the hatches look the basic but but actually they were basic so we could we could choose to replace the handles they're probably rope handles I'd imagine so we could we could take those off drill some holes put some little rope loops in that would add to the look um, yeah, they they look quite nice. Um, we could probably scribe those a little deeper just to add to the effect, but there's nothing wrong with any of that. Um, and then the flat edges have got, got bulkheads to go against, so everything's nice and square. Um, yeah, let's just get... There we go. That's going to look all right, that. So, yeah, um, there is no sink. In fact, there is no issue other than a little bit of flash. Yep, I'm happy with that. So this is the first of two trees of plastic. Um, and we've got a whole variety of parts here. Um, so if we we've got all sorts of blocks and actually they are heart shaped blocks rather than square blocks which is um interesting they might be harder to replace actually but we'll we will have a look um we've got the cat's heads there the cannons i mean there's not no flash on the cannons um, they need drilling out but there's no flash on them so easy enough to deal with um, there is some sink in the top of the crow's nest, but we could possibly do something to hide that, as in maybe scribe some planking detail or something like that. Um, that's that part there needs two holes in it. They need hollow; those little indentations need hollowing out. In fact, probably worth replacing those with, with um, a wooden part, maybe just for effect. Um, 
Then we've got the quite sure all oh, right it's part of the stand so we've got the stand's got quite a bit of sink in it because of this big lump on the back um, but it's very simple it says golden hind there's no scale or manufacturer so I'm all right with that then we've got various bulkheads gallery edges and so on um, we've got quite a substantial bit of plastic there for the doors and the windows. Now the windows would probably be leaded windows um, with a little crisscross on so we'd have to think about that, how we want to go about that, whether we can replace them, I don't know. Um, but again all the markings for painting so that makes masking nice and easy. Um, this is the um, deck where the bowsprit's going to come out and all of those should be gaps really between those that would be like lattice if you like um, so whether we're gonna cut that lot out which is one option or replace it which is another option not sure we'd have to look at it um, that's your gallery floor and yeah it does have some sink but we could probably put some we could probably put some plastic card on that and that would level that nicely um there's quite a bit of flash around the um gunport doors um but the hinges are nicely depicted and you could easily drill a hole through the bottom not a bit of thread through and have a have a cord for opening and closing it that's our flag um, points at the top of the masts and again not too flashy so I'm quite happy with that got some whopping great ejector pin marks in the um, rudder so yeah quite a bit of work on those but and on the cat heads but but not on the crow's nests I'm glad to say they would be difficult and we do have a couple of our figures. So we have, looks like a marine to me, clutching onto his sword with his armor on. He's quite a nice little figure actually. And um, he's got quite a lot of sink in the back though, so a little bit of filling. And then we've got another figure here who is either manipulating a cannon or cleaning a dust brush, brushing the floor or something like that. Actually, there is not much wrong with these parts at all. I reckon in 1977, it probably didn't look much sharper than this. So, quite happy with that. So, our last sprue um, mainly has the mast parts on, on this side. And then we've got anchors being the majority of this side. Uh, we've got bits there, the stand... Um, another figure, one of the four um, gun uh, trucks, the other three having detached themselves. But, um, I mean, they look okay, but they're, they're quite lacking in terms of detail. But they've got the basics. They've got the wedge there for adjusting. They've got the trucks on the side. Um, you could do quite a bit to rework them, or we might get some replacement ones. Um, We've got some more figures, one, two, three, um, and yeah, they are repeats. Uh, it is three different types across five figures. Um, and we've got uh, more, more blocks there. The transom with the door that looks a little odd. One plank is wider than all the others. I'll show you that in a sec. But otherwise, the uh, planking is nicely done, and we've got the detail there. One thing I have not seen. No, I'll have a look at that in a sec. Bulkhead, nice and clear. Now, there's hardly any flash on the masts, I'm glad to say. There's quite a lot of sink in one of the yards, but we might be able to 
deal with that. Yeah, we've got quite a few ejector pin marks on the back. Quite a bit of cleanup actually on the masts. But I'm wondering if it's easier just to replace these with wooden ones, actual wood ones, and do it that way. We can we can actually remove the plastic bit and stick that on the end of the of the wooden one if we're painting the masts. Yeah, lots to think about, lots and lots to think about, but it's not a bad moulding. We've not got any bent parts. I mean, if you get HMS Victory as a classic, um, then all of this is such a mess, it's not usable. Um, but yeah, that isn't too shabby. Finally, we get two lots of thread, which is bright white. Um, why they've not put brown and natural in, I have no idea. Um, I would suggest they're both the same th thickness. Well, one might be thinner than the other, though it doesn't say that it is. Um, yeah, I'm probably not going to use these because you're going to have to paint them or something. So I would rather replace the thread. I do have spare thread, so we'd end up doing that. So we did have some loose parts, but not too bad. Um, and we did have one broken part, or actually I suspect two, because I've got a little bit of plastic there. I'm not sure what it's from. So all of those need to go back in the bag. And then lastly, we have the rigging machine that I think is a tool. Uh, and basically how this works is you've got these little uh, pins here which go through these holes. In fact, let's make it and show you. goes into that like that it is adjustable for the height so you can make different sizes uh, and basically you tie off your thread there it goes around one through one of these wraps around the bottom goes up the top and then you can wrap around that way to make your foot your foot rungs a little bit of liquid PVA and that is your wrap lines and rigging done. It's a very, very neat little tool um, and actually um, if you get one and you start doing wooden model ships, they're worth keeping hold of. That's not quite how you do it on a wooden ship but it is a good cheat uh, for some of the smaller rig, uh, shrouds that you need to make. Yeah, whoever invented that was a genius. It's a really good way of doing the rigging on your plastic ships. So there we have it, the Airfix Golden Hind Vintage Classic from 1977 in 1-72 to scale. What are my first impressions? Well, uh, I've seen the um, HMS Victory Vintage Classic um, and I've got to say, having looked at that, I wouldn't even attempt to build it. It's that rough now in terms of sink and flash and mismolding and there's a huge amount of work but this is not too bad don't go into it lightly though it is not going to be just slotting together like a modern kit it's gonna need work it's gonna need more work than it probably looks like um, but um, it's quite nice the 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 molding isn't too bad so cleanup is probably minimal for that age of kit um, what you've got is a good basis of a nice kit um, to build a nice model ship what you can do with a little bit of research is certainly further com uh, add some further complexity to the rigging you can just see from the uh, the picture that there's more rigging to be put on and that will really add to the look of it um, you can replace the, the threads so that they look better. You can replace the blocks with wooden blocks. I mean, there is no blocks in this kit. I mean, the, the, um, 
the Victory has loads and loads of little uh, plastic blocks, whereas no blocks at all in this. So um, you could add all sorts of rigging and blocks to this to make this look a lot better. It's very colourful. You could do your own research and um, put your own colours in. The one thing that's clearly missing is the figurehead. A golden hind figurehead and there isn't. So whether I can source one of those or whether we're going to accept it without, I don't know. I, I think the figures are a nice little addition, but you've only got four of them. So whether I can find period Elizabethan sailors, um, I don't know. Um, but it's all stuff we can go and have a look at. Um, 172 scale gives us lots of options, so it would be nice to see what we can do to add to that. And once I've done that, I might do a second video showing you what you can add to this to bring it to life a little bit. Okay, I hope that was helpful, useful, or even simply just interesting. Thanks for looking in. Take care, everyone. Enjoy your modeling, and I will see you very soon. <laughs>